To be the oldest human mummy found intact, and scientists believe he died more than 5,000 years ago. Because of new DNA technology, they're reimagining what he actually looked like. DNA sequencing has revealed shocking new details about Europe's oldest natural mummy, Ötzi the Iceman. Ötzi was discovered completely by accident in September 1991 by two German hikers, Helmut and Erika Simon, while they were trekking through the Ötztal Alps, right on the border between Austria and Italy. At first, they thought they had found a modern mountaineer who had recently died, but what they had actually stumbled upon was something far older, more than 5,000 years old. The glacier that had protected him for so long gave him his famous nickname, Ötzi. What makes Ötzi truly extraordinary is how incredibly well his body was preserved. He lived around 3300 BC during the Copper Age, a time of major change when people had started farming, making metal tools and living in permanent settlements. For over five millennia, Ötzi's body remained frozen in ice at over 10,000 feet above sea level, which helped keep his skin, organs and even the contents of his stomach intact. Unlike many other ancient human remains that have been reduced to bones, Ötzi still had flesh, hair fragments and even visible tattoos. Ötzi stood about 5 feet 5 inches, 160 centimeters, tall and weighed around 50 kilograms. He wasn't particularly muscular and scientists believe he may have been quite lean, though strong from a life of constant physical activity. At the time of his death, he was approximately 45 to 46 years old, remarkably old for that era when the average life expectancy was much lower. His body is marked with over 60 tattoos, mostly in lines and crosses, found near his joints, on his knees, lower back, ankles and wrists. Researchers think these weren't decorative but therapeutic, possibly a form of early acupuncture to relieve joint pain from arthritis, which his bones show clear signs of. His belongings were just as fascinating and well-preserved. Ötzi wore a grass cloak for insulation, a warm bearskin cap with a leather chin strap, a coat and leggings made from goat hide, and shoes stuffed with grass for warmth and lined with soft leather. His shoes were cleverly designed for mountain trekking, durable, flexible and well suited for snow. Most impressively, he carried a copper axe, an incredibly rare and valuable tool for the time. The axe's blade was 99.7% pure copper and set into a U-wood handle, showing advanced metalworking skills. Along with the axe, Utzi had a bow, though unfinished, and a quiver of arrows, some ready to use and some still being crafted. He also had a backpack frame made of bent wood and a medicine kit containing two pieces of birch fungus, which had antibiotic and anti-inflammatory properties. These items offer a rare and detailed window into the daily life, survival skills and resourcefulness of people in prehistoric Europe. Initially, scientists believed Utzi had died from exposure, trapped in a storm while crossing the mountains, but later studies changed that theory completely. In 2001, CT scans revealed an arrowhead lodged in his left shoulder, piercing a major artery. He also had wounds on his hands and head. This suggested a violent end. He was likely ambushed, shot from behind, and left to bleed out. Some believe he may have been involved in a conflict shortly before his death, possibly a raid or personal dispute. He had defensive wounds on his hand, hinting he tried to fight back. Since his discovery, Ötzi has become one of the most studied mummies in the world. Researchers examined everything, from his teeth, bones and stomach contents to the pollen and dust trapped inside his body. This has allowed scientists to track where he travelled in the days before his death, what he ate, including ibex meat and bread, and even what illnesses he had. He had bad teeth, hardened arteries, gallstones, and carried the bacterium Helicobacter pylori, which causes stomach ulcers but perhaps the biggest breakthroughs have come from studying his DNA. In 2012, scientists successfully sequenced Ötzi's full genome for the first time, a major scientific achievement. It was the first time anyone had fully decoded the DNA of a prehistoric mummy. The results gave us fascinating insights into his ancestry, health and appearance. Now, over a decade later, with even more advanced DNA sequencing technology, 
Researchers from the Max Planck Institute and URAC Research have taken things further. They've reconstructed Utzi's genome with far greater detail and accuracy, and the results? Absolutely astonishing. Earlier reconstructions of Utzi's appearance showed him as light-skinned, fair-haired, and similar in looks to modern Europeans. But the new genome tells a very different story. Utzi was most likely bald, or at least balding, and had much darker skin than previously believed. His skin tone was naturally dark brown, not just a result of the mummification process. This is a huge shift in how we understand the appearance of prehistoric Europeans. Utzi's genome also revealed he carried genetic markers for several health conditions. He had a strong genetic risk for heart disease and was genetically predisposed to diabetes and obesity, surprising considering his active lifestyle and limited diet. These conditions may not have developed due to his environment, but they were there in his DNA. The most surprising revelation, however, came from Utzi's ancestry. Unlike other ancient Europeans from his time, Utzi had a remarkably high amount of early Anatolian farmer ancestry. These were people who had migrated into Europe from the region of modern-day Turkey thousands of years earlier, bringing with them farming, livestock and a settled way of life. While most European populations had mixed with local hunter-gatherers and later groups like the steppe nomads, Utzi and his people seem to have remained isolated. In fact, researchers found no steppe-related ancestry in his genome at all, a striking difference from later European populations who were largely shaped by massive migrations from the Eurasian steppe. Utzi's DNA shows that he belonged to a community that had remained genetically isolated for generations, likely due to the remote and rugged environment of the Alpine valleys. Interestingly, another ancient individual from nearby northern Italy, dated to around the same period, showed similar genetic patterns, reinforcing the idea that this region had pockets of population that stayed separated from wider gene flow. Despite the isolation, Utzi's DNA showed a healthy level of genetic diversity, no signs of inbreeding or population collapse, which is rare for small, isolated communities. The high-quality genome also allowed researchers to predict physical features with greater confidence. Using over 100 genetic markers, they concluded that Utzi's skin was naturally dark, and his baldness was likely genetic. This aligns with the lack of hair found with the mummy, and contradicts earlier reconstructions that showed him with full hair and lighter skin. The researchers were careful to point out the limits of their findings. They only had one individual to study, so they couldn't say for sure if all people in Otzi's community looked or lived like him. But having another ancient sample with similar ancestry helps confirm that Otzi wasn't just an odd case. He represented a distinct group of early Europeans. They also reminded us that traits like skin colour and baldness are influenced by both genes and the environment. For example, long exposure to sunlight, nutrition and health conditions can affect how genetic traits are expressed. So while genetic predictions are powerful, they're just part of the story. Still, this research is a major step forward. It not only adds new layers of detail to Utzi's story, it also challenges some long-standing ideas about what prehistoric Europeans looked like and where they came from. It shows us that ancient Europe wasn't a single genetic group, but a patchwork of diverse communities shaped by geography, migration and isolation. Utzi's body may have been frozen in time, but the science around him is constantly evolving. His story continues to teach us about the past, about who we were, where we came from, and how we've changed over thousands of years. And with each new discovery, he reminds us that even one life, preserved by ice, can open a window into the distant human past. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this deep dive into prehistoric genetics, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating content. You can also support us by checking out the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.